At the beginning, there was chaos, an unending scene of everything, everywhere, all at once. There was once no underlying principles in the world, and life had not yet been formed. Then, a colorful comet. First, second, third. Din, the goddess of power. Nehru, the goddess of wisdom. And Faror, the goddess of courage. In a burst of red flames, suddenly, boulders formed and smashed together, creating the vast stretching terrain. Earth. Dry and unwelcoming. Barren. Devoid of life. And no one but the comets to witness it. A wave of blue covered the sky. Nehru poured her wisdom into the earth and gave law to the world. Now there were spirits, light, day and night, stars. Order was born into the world. Finally, green shrouded the earth. Faror, with her rich heart, she creates all life that obeys the law. Grass and trees sprang out from nothing, with a host of critters hidden safe within them. And from the gentle and stalwart heart of the god of courage, earth crawling, air flying, and all living creatures were made. Creatures of all shapes and sizes woke up and beheld this new beautiful world. Then comets met again in the sky. Content, these goddesses departed for the heavens. As they disappeared, the sun's reflection caught something, shining brilliantly. A triangle of gold descended upon this new earth, whispering promises of power, courage, and wisdom for anyone able to acquire it. Such was the birth of Hyrule. This is a tale handed down by you humans of that unprecedented, terrible war of violence never before seen. A crack in the earth appeared suddenly, and evil revealed itself. They stole away the smiles from those like you, the people of the land. The evil ones burnt the forests, dried up the springs, and continued to murder people. Their objective was the almighty power, protected by her, the goddess. The Triforce. That's the almighty power created by the ancient gods which is capable of altering the principle of all things to grant the desire of whoever obtains it. Demise desired the world, and so they commanded monsters and waged war to make the Triforce their own. For the sake of protecting the almighty power from the evil ones, the goddess placed the surviving humans upon some land and floated it into the sky place beyond the reach of demons. The upper limits of the sky, beyond a sea of clouds. Thus the goddess and the subhumans wagered their lives to seal up the evil. And days of silence were recovered in the land once more. The goddess finally sealed away demise. In that process, she mortally wounded herself. It seems as though Hylia and Demise have a fate of their own. This goddess had to create the entire plan and execute it before she had to abandon her divine form. 
so the goddess Hylia prepared two plans to fully eradicate them. Within the Land of Light, many worked with goddess Hylia on her plan. One was to create the spirit Phi, which resides in the blade you're carrying, to guide her chosen one. O oh, youth, guided by the servant of the goddess, unite earth and sky and bring light to the land. The youth who draws out the guiding sword shall be chosen by the goddess, and he shall also be the possessor of an adamant soul. This child of destiny will be assigned by fate to dispel the shadow of the great calamity. With the spirit of the sword, they shall pass through the clouds and descend from the sky. Together with the shrine maiden shall they restore a powerful light to the land. When the light of the goddess's sword shines bright, the great apocalypse will wake from its long slumber. Do not fear, for it is then that a youth guided by my hand shall reveal himself in a place most sacred. Yes. Hylia decided to use the inheritance of the ancient gods to annihilate the destroyer. Hylia herself would abandon her divine body and her soul would be reincarnated as a human. In order to stabilize the seal, I must go to sleep. An eternal sleep from which I want to awaken from for thousands of years. I wanted an ordinary life together, to spend all of my days together with you, Link. While I am the reincarnation of the goddess, I am still my father's daughter. I am still your childhood friend, Zelda. She could not do everything on her own. She would bide her time in a closed loop, using a portal built by her people. Hylia prepared the Chosen Ones by assigning Phi as a navigator and Impa as Zelda's protector. They will be binded to their destiny. The temples would be built to house the springs and the sacred flames. Everything should go all according to plan. Zelda and Link both hear a noise. They have both been having premonitions. Link dreamt of one, and they can both hear Phi. Remember Hylia's perfect plan? Well. That all went sideways when Zelda is swept up in a huge storm. Impa informs Zelda who she is. Zelda is immediately dedicated to her duties. Zelda fully devotes herself to Hylia's plan. She is intent on following her destiny. Zelda is able to wield this power with relative ease. She also does not struggle to tap into her spiritual energy. She is calm and focused. The Demon King who still sleeps in the past can be resurrected. And there I'll make use of the spirit of the goddess this girl carries. You will experience the Demon Tribe's ultimate execution method. The infinite hell. Oh, youth. While I am the reincarnation of the goddess. Guided by the servant of the goddess. I am still my father's daughter. Unite earth and sky. Link, I am still your childhood friend. And bring light to the land. Zelda.
when the light of the goddess's sword shines bright, the great apocalypse will wake from its long slumber. The demon king will absorb the spirit of the goddess. Do not fear, for it is then that a youth, guided by my hand, shall reveal himself in, in a, a place, place most sacred. Right here, right now, his resurrection will be complete. Zelda is the Keeper of the Light Force. And for a long time, the golden light of the Force has dwelt in Hyrule's princess, illuminating the land. The elemental door only opens every hundred years. The Wind Mage, Vadi, attempts to steal the Light Force. The princess carries the power of light. It's said that Hyrulean princesses possess this. They call it a mysterious power. It wouldn't do well to ignore someone with such power. The Force is a source of limitless magical power. If Vati obtains it, the results would be catastrophic. This mysterious orange cap gives Zelda the power to reverse the havoc done to Hyrule. The blade that is sealed by Vadi is protected by Zelda in its sanctuary. had a dream. Hyrule was covered in black clouds. And it kept getting darker. And darker. Then, a single ray of light came from the forest. And that light cut up through the clouds and illuminated the earth. Zelda has already made a plan. And Impa is in on it. And perhaps it involves a very powerful tool. It is law that all of the people in this village serve the Hyrulean royal family. Born and raised in Kakariko, Impa was chosen to be Zelda's attendant a number of years before the events of the game. This allowed her to develop a close bond with the young princess, providing her with care and protection. Impa's role seems to have been dual, both a bodyguard and a nurse. After all, Zelda was very young at that point, and also, it is Impa who taught Link Zelda's lullaby, thus directly confirming that she has been playing this song for Zelda for quite some time now. Until Link appeared, Impa was the only one to believe that Zelda's dreams were visions, which both serves as a clear display of the bond between the two and shows Impa's devotion to the young girl very much not unlike her predecessor in Skyward Sword. 
she was very quick to react and protect the princess when Ganondorf attacked Hyrule Castle. We don't know where exactly she was at the time of the attack. It is clear, however, that she managed to get to the princess first, mounted a horse and fled, taking young Zelda with her, with Ganondorf hot on their trail. Because Impa is a badass, she managed to not only shake off Ganondorf's chase, but also to successfully hide herself and Zelda from him for seven years. He acquired the Triforce in the heart of this sacred realm, in this Temple of Light, and with that power, he became the Demon King. His magic power continued to flow out of the temples and, in only seven years, the entire land of Hyrule was turned into a land of monsters. Zelda was already in possession of Triforce of Wisdom. Ganondorf was actively searching for them both. They were fugitives, and yet they both survived. Not much is known about what was happening in those seven long years. We know what resulted. Zelda was taught Shika history and myths, trained in Shika ways, enough to be able to take care of herself while passing off as one. One can only assume that these years spent together served only to strengthen the bond between the two. Impa became essentially a mother to Zelda, if she wasn't already. A shadowy guardian angel. No wonder then, that when Impa underwent her sage awakening, her words to Link were of none other than Zelda. I have to stay here. You go to Princess Zelda's side and protect her on my behalf. Impa's relationship to Kakariko is also worth exploring. Kakariko was known as the village of the Shika, despite the common belief being that Shika went nearly extinct long ago. Impa is the only member of the tribe seen in Ocarina and seems to also have been a leader of Kakariko. When she left the village to attend to Zelda, she opened it to the common people, allowing them to settle and expand the town. This seems to suggest that Impa was one of the very few, if not the only remaining Shika resident at that time. What happened with the rest of them? Unclear. After Impa and Zelda went into hiding, Impa did not stop protecting the village. She was responsible for keeping the monsters of Shadow Temple at bay and, by extension, the dark history of the royal family hidden. That is where Link found her before her sage awakening, fighting terrifying Bongo Bongo. The Shika are interested in being able to use the royal family's power. Assigning a set of musically gifted brothers to the task. And so they studied these powers. We were tasked with analyzing and explaining the mysterious power passed down by the royal family. To tell the truth, each of us was studying a different song. One to summon the sun, and another to summon the moon. Though we've been unable to clarify the power of the Triforce, we brothers serve the Hyrulean royal family, and were tasked with studying the mysterious power passed down through the royal family.
Sheikah's a survivor of the mysterious Sheikah tribe, allegedly. Perhaps he was protecting the whereabouts or movements of the current members of the tribe. He sets Link's quest in motion. Sheik shares melodies that allow Link to teleport. Perhaps these melodies are played on the very same goddess harp from the ancient past. Each time Sheik teaches a melody, he shares wisdom that seems to never age, no matter how old the game gets. Time passes, people move. Like a river's flow, it never ends. Like the flow of water, it never remains the same. Past, present, future. The Master Sword is a ship upon which you can sail upstream or downstream through Time's River. The port for that ship is in the Temple of Time. Seven years ago, when you opened the door to the Temple of Time, he managed to sneak in and arrived in the Sacred Realm. But when he laid his hand on the Triforce, the legend came true. When the Triforce broke into three, what remained in Ganondorf's hand was only the Triforce of Power. Through the strength of the Triforce, he became a demon king. But his ambitions did not stop there. To gain complete control, Ganondorf started to look for those chosen by the gods to claim the remaining two Triforces. The one in whom the Triforce of Courage resides is the hero of time, Link. And the other one in whom the Triforce of Wisdom resides will be the leader of the sages, the seventh in their midst. It is I, the Princess of Hyrule, Zelda. Sheik reveals themselves as Princess Zelda and grants Link the Light Arrows, a powerful arrow of divine light capable of bringing down a demon king. These are not a weapon crafted by human hands, but by the divine. The same power within Zelda is also within these arrows. The moment Princess Zelda does this, Ganondorf could sense where she was and captures her in a pink crystal structure. Ganondorf telepathically communicates with Zelda, and it appears that Link can hear him too. This is, once again, an example of the connection that Demise and Hylia share. Even after Link defeats Ganondorf and the castle is collapsing, Zelda is captured in a ring of dark magic. Ganon knocks the Master Sword out of the magical barrier. And once Link has him weakened, he can get to it again. Link weakens him, and then Zelda uses her powers to stun him, which allows Link to land the finishing blow. The most critically important plot point happens when Zelda believes she is correcting her mistakes. She asks Link for the ocarina, then plays Zelda's lullaby to send Link back to the child timeline. She doesn't use the Song of Time or the Prelude of Light. She uses Zelda's lullaby. Perhaps Zelda playing the song unleashes her divine power. and Link leaves in a beam of blue light.
In this world, just as there is light that illuminates the darkness, there exists a power that repulses demonic powers. Zelda is a bear of power. Link took the Triforce of Courage back with him to the Child Timeline. Link warns the royal family about Ganondorf, and his execution was scheduled to take place not long after these events. The sages misinterpret Ganondorf receiving the Triforce of Power as a divine prank. In reality, the Triforce in the Sacred Realm is influenced and had to balance to correct the Triforce in both the adult and the child's timeline. Ganondorf kills one of the sages and they panic. Ganondorf lends his power to Zand, who sieges the Light World, forcing Zelda to accept subjugation to protect her people. After collecting the Fused Shadow, Zant confronts Midna. Link attempts to intervene, cursing him to remain in his dark form. Zant uses Lanayru's light against Midna's will, nearly killing her. Midna, in her weakened, dying state, urges Link to go to the castle. The colors on her skin are actually inverted. Her hair turns blue. She lacks all the markings of her race. She requests that Zelda tell Link where to find the Mirror of Twilight. Zelda recognizes that they are fighting for the same cause at this moment. Midna can do more for Hyrule than Zelda can. Zelda allegedly passed on her life force to Midna. And with it, the Triforce. Minna, please accept this. It's for you. However, there is another exception. When Ganondorf passes his power on to Zand. Yet Ganondorf and Zelda mirroring each other again. No pun intended. On Link's journey to get the Mirror of Twilight, he must find a way to the sky. And on his hunt for the sky book, he ends up in Kakariko. It's you, the savior. My name is Impas. I'm the last resident of this poor village. My name comes from the great one who built this village so long ago. This village was once the secret home of a proud tribe who served the royal family, but it fell into decline and became infested with dangerous beasts. It's become an awful place by royal order, I can't leave this place until a certain person arrives, no matter what terrible fate is visited upon it. We all know that Kakariko was established by the Fika, Impa to be more specific. Not every resident of the town is a Fika, but they all must serve the royal family. They all do. But an Impa is the one who is tasked with being the leader of Kakariko, keeping the secrets of the royal family and, most of the time, is the one who guides Link in some way. Is that the Dominion Rod? Ah, uh, could it really be? Are you the messenger to the heavens? Among the legends of my clan, there is a story from the time when the Oka still maintained contact with the royal family. No other clan in Hyrule knows about this, but the Shika, who maybe even contributed to the Rod's creation, do. What's more, Impas has the skybook, necessary for the hero to proceed in his journey. The rod was only to be carried by the messenger to the heavens when the royal family needed to communicate with the Oka. From generation to generation, my ancestors have guarded the book that, by royal decree, was to be given to the messenger to the heavens. This is that book. This makes it clear that the royal family made contact with the sky.
impasse was told that someone will come, ordered to wait for him. But she wasn't given any specific time and after waiting and waiting, slowly growing old, she almost lost her hope in Link's arrival. But Ilya, whom she has saved earlier in the game, knows Link and tells her about him. This cheers her up, knowing her ancestors were right. By the way, aside from all that, there is a little fun fact. Midna turns into an imp who is guiding Link in the game. There is a possibility that the Twilight were former Shika. Now this imp is the leader of their clan, who also happened to guide Link, giving him knowledge about matters only the royal family, the Oka and the Shika would know. Interesting. The child timeline is the only timeline in which the Triforce is not reunified at the end. This subtext suggests that Ganondorf defeated Midna. This could mean that he's in possession of the Triforce of Wisdom and Power. This doesn't make sense, because when Ganondorf looks at his hand, the only Triforce to light up is Power. Then again, Midna appears in her Twilight Dami Mommy form, apparently unharmed. So, uh... Since this whole string of events is not very clear, I would like to attempt to make some sense of it. <laughs> if the Triforce of Wisdom is not within Ganondorf, that only leaves two places it can be. Either Zelda or Midna. Logically, Zelda does not have the Triforce of Wisdom in the throne room. If she did, Ganondorf would have likely taken it from her. Ganondorf can use Twilight Sorcery. He turns into these black squares of energy to possess Zelda. Square-like markings appear on her face and her arms. And her skin is ghostly white. Ganondorf is able to use light against Link. Minna steps in with the fused shadow to protect Zelda. He teleports and makes multiple portals. After Link beats him in this form, his dark beast get in for him burns with yellow and black fire. Minna begins glowing with light, which returns to Princess Zelda. She opens her eyes. Minna returns Zelda's life force. But did she return the Triforce? Minna may more closely align with this attribute. The fire is changing. That fire burns with the essence of Ganondorf. It burns with Ganondorf's hatred. Minna takes Ganondorf head on. In the next scene, the fused shadow is crushed. Zelda calls upon the light spirits. Link and Zelda both teleport out using light and the Light Spirits grant Zelda light arrows. She uses these to stun Ganondorf while on horseback. After Link lands the finishing blow, Minna appears off in the distance, with the Fused Shadow on. In the previous scene, it was crushed into the ground. She also is in her imp form, in the World of Light, which the appearance of the Light Spirits nearly killed Minna before. In addition to being unaffected by the Light World, Minna sheds a tear of light as she enters the Twilight Realm. When Minna fled to the Twilight Realm, she took the Triforce with her, 
This could be why the Triforce is incomplete in this timeline. This could mean that Minna possesses the Triforce of Wisdom, not Zelda. This is a story from not so long ago. There was a girl who served as the leader of some pirates. This girl's name was Tetra, and she was exceedingly beautiful. She's a little rough and tumble tomboy badass with her gang of boys. Tetra was brave, and she set up to search the lengths of the sea. At that time, she stopped by an island and met a boy clothed in green. Wow, what's with that getup? And after an unexpected turn of events, they began to travel together. They spotted strange ruins, and Tetra was enveloped by a mysterious light while journeying inside. She was transformed into a beautiful princess. The hair, the makeup, the dress, it's just not her. This isn't who Tetra is. You are confused, aren't you? Tetra was actually from a long gone kingdom. She was the princess of Hyrule Kingdom, Princess Zelda. I suppose such is to be expected from a woman. But then suddenly, the dreadful Demon King appeared. Princess Zelda was kidnapped. The Demon King's aim was the sacred power passed down by generations of Hyrulean princesses. He schemed to make that power his own, so the boy gave chase to rescue Zelda. In the end, he searched far and wide, crossing seas and mountains. The boy had acquired the power to repel evil and become a hero. And by the great efforts, he defeated the Demon King. The captured Princess Zelda was rescued. It might be important to mention that Tetra saved him first. Afterwards, the hero and Princess Zelda sought out the new world together as pirates. Tetra puts on her pirate outfit and sails into the distance. We were on a journey once again, and we all lived happily ever after. Is the princess's love for her fallen knight awakens her power. But when she found a reason to protect the person she deeply cared about, she was finally able to accept who she was and in the end, save Hyrule. Zelda also flings herself into Link's arms for comfort in another scene while overcome with despair over Calamity Ganon. So for <sighs> This one here is called the Silent Princess. It's a rare, endangered species. Despite our efforts, we can't get them to grow domestically yet. The princess can only thrive out here, in the wild. All that we can hope is that the species will be strong enough to prosper on its own. Zelda is cut off spiritually. She has an inability to express herself emotionally. What she lacks in spirituality is compensated by her research and her attitude. She does light up with these little discoveries, and you could say that she has determination, or in other words, she's got moxie. Urbosa has taken a maternal role to Zelda and is someone she feels comfortable talking to. When Zelda's training began, Urbosa accompanied her to the springs. She witnessed Zelda push herself, nearly passing out in the icy waters. They are close enough that Zelda feels comfortable expressing her thoughts to Urbosa. Zelda feels like Link is a living reminder of her own failures. Impa's appearance in this game is very different from the previous two. Rather than a warrior, at the time Link meets her, or rather re-meets her, Impa is an elderly woman. She offers Link some wise words of guidance, she provides him with insight about the ancient legends, and bestows upon him his old sky blue champion tunic. Otherwise, she just lets him be. She spends her days in the comfort of her house, 
guarded by Shika warriors and in the company of her granddaughter. Even less is known about Impa's time between her serving as a Shika researcher alongside Pura and Robbie and Link's awakening from the slumber of restoration. We know that she was supposed to await his return after Pura and Robbie placed him in the Shrine of Resurrection and likely kept checking up on him periodically, just to be safe. We know that by the time Robbie and Pura evacuated their royal lab and traveled eastward with all their equipment, Impa was already in Kakariko. The three met and decided to split up in an attempt to ensure at least one of them survives long enough to guide Link after his wounds have healed. Breath of the Wild's Impa is a person of very calm demeanor, wise and patient. She embodies the spirit of Kakariko village and Shika as a people. No wonder she is their beloved leader. Again, in contrast to the other two major appearances of Impa, here she seems far more concerned with ruling Kakariko village than with devoting herself to the princess and the royal family. She might have been present during the battle of Fort Hateno, however she isn't seen within the final memory. Instead, Shika who came to Zelda's aid are random Kakariko warriors, and the person who actually was throwing themselves between the princess and the danger was Link. Link does seem very confident and comfortable in his own skin. So, spill it, boy. Have the two of you been getting along all right? It's okay, I know. Your silence speaks volumes. She gets frustrated every time she looks up and sees you carrying that sword on your back. It makes her feel like a failure when it comes to her own destiny. However, Zelda is seen like a complete failure to the king. They are out there at this moment, whispering amongst themselves that you are the heir to a throne of nothing. Nothing but failure. This is what created a competitive dynamic with Link, which, from an emotional standpoint, would just make Zelda feel worse about herself. In his eyes, she needed to hurry and get in position so everything was on standby as soon as Ganondorf strikes. Now you are here wasting your time. You need to be dedicating every moment you have to your training. He's worried that everyone's going to die if she does not tap into her ceiling powers in time. And that's exactly what happens. Zelda is 16. It's easy to empathize with her, clearly, because she's doing everything in her power. She's going through all of the routines, but she can tap into her spiritual energy. This would be extremely frustrating to deal with. First off, her father has been dragging her since she was a kid, even though she was not permitted to even go to the Spring of Wisdom until she was 17. The Nehru's decree is very specific. It says no one is allowed under the age of 17, for only the wise are permitted a place upon the mountain. Tomorrow is my 17th birthday. Perhaps the Spring of Wisdom, the final of the three, will be the one. Well? Don't keep us in suspense. How'd everything go up there on the mountain? She's pressured so much, and she was not even able to complete her training until this day. Once again, we see the invisible tether between Hylia and Demise. Calamity Ganon revives immediately after her training session on Mount Lanayru. She still believes that her sealing power isn't what is going to save them, so she orders the pilots and the technology to act as fast as possible, do as much damage as they can, 
and hopefully even destroy Ganon without her. This sets the end of her character arc into rapid motion. She's now capable of giving orders because she still hopes that the pilots will manage to arrive safely and hopefully kill Ganon with the technology she knows so much about. One of the things I do not understand is why the champions weren't in position. It does not make sense from a military standpoint. They didn't even bring the Divine Beast with them to respond even if a need should arise. If you think about it, they had to travel from the Spring of Wisdom all the way back to their respective Divine Beasts. And then fight the Blights immediately after. No wonder they died. Her grace is a reincarnation of the divine goddess Hylia, so she's burdened and blessed with the task of protecting the people and the Triforce. Zelda puts herself in harm's way for Link almost as a gamble against the goddesses, gaining her courage and the last piece of the Triforce. If her powers didn't kick in right here, they would have both certainly died. This has nothing to do with her love for Link. Zelda knows that she must continue to take actions as quickly as possible to limit the damage. Zelda tries to give the Deku Tree her last words to Link, and he stops her. Well, howdy. This is the subtext of the conversation. Happy birthday. The Master Sword. I heard it speak to me. Seems like things are picking up over there at the castle. Is everything okay? There is still something I must do. I know you can do it. I believe in you. Go on. Go get stepping. Great Deku Tree. I ask of you. When he returns, can you please relay this message? Tell him I- Girl, you're not going to die. You'll be fine. Just go on ahead and use them sealing powers. I know I've seen this happen before, ain't nothing new. The Deku Tree has been around for a while. In fact, he probably has seen this cycle happen a few times. Zelda leaves a message for Link when he touches the Master Sword. This is similar to how Hylia is able to leave messages for Zelda in the Goddess Statues. Link. You are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. One of the things that constantly confused me about Zelda's story is that she is the goddess Hylia, and yet Hylia seems to be disconnected from Zelda. If Link prays at the goddess statue, then there's a voice that speaks to him. This same interaction happens in Skyward Sword before Zelda awakens as Hylia. After Link and Zelda find the Crimson Loft Wing, they both hear a voice at the same time. Zelda is blocked from her spiritual progression, from something that already exists in the Zelda universe. Jackie is something that manifests from negative emotions. I think the burden of being a princess who must have sealing powers became the very reason why she did not have the sealing powers. She's depressed because her dad is harping on her and calling her a failure. She's envious of Link naturally assuming his role as a hero. This is why in her diary she mentions that she could see a woman enveloped in a bright light and couldn't hear her. Perhaps since visiting the Spring of Wisdom, she can now hear this voice. Either way, once again, Zelda seals herself to keep the seal on Calamity Ganon. One of the more interesting details I found myself drawn to was the Silent Princess growing in Zelda's study. One can't help but draw symbolism from the way she talks about it, and the placement of this particular flower. Despite our efforts, 
We can't get them to grow domestically yet. There's barely any vegetation, and yet... This particular flower is growing within the storm of the calamity. This rare flower is here, in Zelda's study. To me, there is a powerful meaning to this particular flower. The princess can only thrive out here, in the wild. How fitting. The silent princess blooms within the face of adversity, in Zelda's study, where she too flourished. All that we can hope is that the species will be strong enough to prosper on its own. On its own. Zelda, to ascend one must fall. Link, you must find me. Do not fear. It was not the end. You'll see soon enough. When the light of the goddess's sword shines bright, he shall come. The great apocalypse will wake from its long slumber. Wreathed in savage flames. Mortal but undying. Unending. Hatred incarnate. Oh, youth. There will be others. Show the two whirling sails the way to the light tower. Once wielding powers of soul and wands of night. The sword. Guided by the servant of the goddess. A sacred blade. A bridge. Do not fear. It must regain its splendor. See to it that it does. And before you a path shall open. You shall see him again. You shall aid him. O oh, youth, guided by the servant of the goddess. That is something only you can do. Unite earth and sky and bring light to the land. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not fear. For it is then that a youth, guided by my hand, shall reveal himself. In a place most sacred. There will be others. They will aid you. Show you the path. Right now, the number one interest I have is with the legendary Sky People. It's the common opinion that the Hylians are the race closest to the gods, and that they constructed Hyrule. However, as a matter of fact, there is a theory that there is a race even closer to the gods than the Hylians. This is the Nightmare Refinery. And they created it. Space time stones are produced inside. I can confirm a transition of space time has occurred in this space. It appears that striking the blue stone has had an effect on the immediate area around it receding time within this space into its past state. Then, along with the birth of the Hylians, they built a new city and floated it into the sky and began to live there. We've lived among the winds. Scholars say that they still live there even now, in their city, floating somewhere in the great sky. Now we have mastered them. We are the wind people. Sky people. With the power of the great winds, we leave this land behind and head to the sky. It's fantastic, isn't it? I would very much like to meet them. In case you didn't notice, we're in the home of the wind people above the cloud.